Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, in this video I'm going to look at printing greetings cards on this, the Canon Pro 200. Um, now quite a lot of what I say here is relevant for any smallish printer like this that you might want to print greetings cards on. So I do have information on the Northlight Images website and I have done some other videos looking at greetings cards. But remember that the slight differences between printers are relatively inconsequential. Uh, there are details which I do go into in some of the articles but this is more about uh, what card should I use? Um, this is a question I get asked quite often. Um, somebody's looking to print cards and um, they see that a printer like this, Can Pro 200 or the Pro 300, uh, slightly more expensive printer, uh, pigment inks rather than dye inks, though that's not really that important here. They want to print some cards. And there are quite a lot of pre-made cards available. Now these, and I've looked at some of the others, come in a wide range of sizes. Uh, these are from a company called Paper Spectrum here in Leicester. It's a local company within cycling distance. So um, I do quite a bit of testing with them, but I uh, appreciate these are seen all around the world. Um, they do ship obviously in the UK, I don't know about Europe anymore, but obviously in the US you'll have to find something else. But uh, a lot of people do cards. And the important bit is, if you are using an inkjet printer, you need to use card that's specified for inkjet printers. Now this one here, this is a semi-gloss, now this is an A4 sheet, it's got a crease, pre-crease here, comes with envelopes as well. So this is standard A4, you could print this boardless, for example. Um, the range of print sizes which are available boardless does vary by printer, so you do need to check the specs. It's quite possible that a specific paper size or card size you have may not print boardless, and you may then need to allow for a margin around the edge when you're printing. Other sizes will print boardless, that's great. Um, typically, this is A4, it folds down to, to A5. Uh, here's a, another one, that's on a semi-gloss, almost like a thin photo card. This one's on an etching paper. Now this is like a fine art uh, cotton rag paper. Um, this one has the crease down here, so it folds to A5 that direction. This one is supported boardless and this printer and several others I've tried. This one isn't, so this one you'd need a border, this one you wouldn't. But the real question that led me to look at this was somebody kindly sent me a sample of some card they were having difficulty with. Now seems quite a reasonable card, it's creased down here. However, in looking at it, it's plain white card. And when I mean plain white card, this is card that costs perhaps 50 sheets for five pounds. So not terribly expensive card. That's one clue. The other thing is in the description on the website where this was from, it was from a craft supplier in the UK, there is no mention of printing on it. Uh, there is mention of sticking things onto it and doing other, other stuff, but there is no mention of printing. And you do need to be careful with that because, and I, I will do a test print now, and we'll see what happens when I try using a paper or card that's not meant for print. One other thing, just on, on papers like this, if it is a photo paper, a paper meant for inkjet printing, then it will have a special coating to absorb and hold on to the ink. One way you can test which is the right side of a piece of card like this, if it's coated, because unfortunately very few are double-sided, so most card printing you're going to be able to do on something like this is only single-sided. Now, I just make my finger slightly damp and touch it on here. Doesn't stick. Same again, touch it on the corner here. There's no tackiness to it. If I try that on one of these photo papers, one side will have an ever so slight tackiness feel to it and the other won't. The side with the slight stickiness on it, that is the side you print on. But anyway, I've got this piece of paper here, or card. Um, I'm going to put it into the Pro 200 here. Now, it's always best when using a printer like this if you can set the media settings on the screen here. Now, I've set page size others, 
Um, this is not a standard page size. It is, uh, if I have it here, 147 millimeters by 297 millimeters. So that means this is um, the same length as A4. Not a standard one, it's not available borderless. I've set the type media type here for cardstock. Now that suggests that it's going to set it up. It may well print for cardstock. Mm. I suspect not. But anyway, going over to the uh, laptop here, I'm using Canon's professional print and layout software. I've uh, got a test image, and this test image I'll make available on the North Light Images website. It's based on the test image that I have used for normal printing. This one has been scaled and uh, produced for specifically for testing cards. It's at very high resolution, 600 ppi, so that you can use it to check both colour and detail. It has fine text, fine detail, lots of colour on it. It's also available in two different versions, one in the sRGB colour space, one in Adobe 98. Now, if you don't know the difference between those, pick the sRGB one. If you know why you might choose to use Adobe 98, well, use that one. Um, I won't go into it anymore other than to say that uh, you can get richer colours if the paper or card can handle it. But anyway, I've set this uh, uh, professional print and layout software. It's free software. Uh, it's well worth in in installing. I'm driving it from Photoshop, but uh, you can do it from any bit of software, and I believe it works on its own as well. So anyway, I've set the media type here. I've created a custom paper size of 147 by 297. I can't select borderless. I'm going for the top feed. Uh, print quality defaults at high. The only other area really to look at is color management. And in this, I've told it to use an ICC profile and an automatic setting. So we'll see what the printer software thinks is the right profile. Now, for other media, such as the uh, cards that I've got here, the semi-gloss and the art paper, I'd use profiles for a semi-gloss paper or an art paper for, for printing. But here we're just printing on card. I've got it, everything set to auto. Um, one thing I would mention is the rendering intent. Um, feel free to change the rendering intent from perceptual or to relative colorimetric and it may well change how the image looks on the screen. If one looks better, print with the one that looks better. But anyway, this is all set up. I've got lots of other stuff about printing, by the way. So if you're not familiar with this, I've um, got lots of details about it. But anyway, I'm just going to press print and we'll see what happens. The uh, file is on its way from the laptop. Um, when you load the card in the back here, don't push the uh, guides too tight and the card should sit comfortably it should not be tightly wedged in or anything like that is it john and take it through let's move this one out of the way and it's printing it prints quite quickly comes the uh, leading edge of the card now i haven't done any particular alignment on this this really is just a test print of image quality and the idea of using a known test image like this rather than one of your own graphics or one of your own card designs is that one of your own card designs might the way you've printed it the way you've done the software there might be an error there somewhere that's causing a problem here by just printing this jpeg file um, either in the adobe 98 or the srgb one you're printing just a basic file there's nothing wrong with that file so if the picture comes out wrong here you've got something wrong in the printing process or in this case as i'm going to see in a moment with the actual media itself now i can right away see uh, the fine detail there is plenty of fine detail on here um, it looks quite reasonable but it's very faint and washed out um, this is not yeah there we go um, now I can read the very fine text that's on the test image here and that's no problem um, I can see there's a there's a pattern here for showing fine detail and picking up smudging and uh, we've got the image itself and the image well the colors don't look terribly good um, they're broadly right, but the colours are too, well, 
it's washed out. Um, it's just very poor. Um, the reason I say that, because here is the same image printed on the etching on the art paper card. Now, hopefully, even in the video here, and it's very difficult showing detail in videos like this, um, it really is, there's no comparison. This one, I'd be happy sending to somebody, or selling, or, or whatever you want to do with your cards. This one is good for a bookmark, but no more. Um, no. If I go to the semi-gloss paper, and this is the A4 one, the difference between them, I don't know what the printer's doing there, just they, printers do bits of exercise every so often, they just, if when you've done a print, they'll do a bit of cleaning or something like that. Um, it's what they do, don't worry about it. But there we go, there is one printed on the semi-gloss paper, and there is our sample that just doesn't work. Um, I've tried it on lots of, before you think, oh, well, you used the wrong settings or something. I've tried this image and versions, uh, versions of it um, on this card, both sides, um, loads of different ways, and it is uniformly awful. Um, so it would seem that the real key to getting good results for greetings cards for a printer like this. And this goes for Epson printers as well, and the Canon 300 um, is getting the right card. Uh, if you don't get the right card, you will not get good results. And no amount of messing around with settings, adjustments, and various things will fix it. There is no way through making various adjustments, I can get the depth of this one to be even remotely close to this one, and this is on a semi-gloss paper, or this one here on the art paper. So hopefully that's of some use. Um, as I say, the uh, test image that I've used here is available for download. If it's useful, um, let me know. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you've got any questions, please ask. Um, I'm always looking for things to test here that may be of use to people. So, uh, thank you very much.